All right, welcome back to Word Encounter. Glad to be, ha be back with you guys. We uh, had a week off last week. I think for a very good reason. Mm -hmm. It was my that? wedding anniversary. Oh, yes it was. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Right, so, you know. Yeah, you know, when you run the show, you get to take off whenever you want, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. We're uh, happy to have our brother Gary back with us again. Yes, Gary. Yeah. yeah. After his uh, soiree into the southern parts, <laughs> <laughs> vacations are good. So we're here tonight to uh, continue on with uh, his discussion, um, his part of this program, which deals with the, uh, the Jewish feasts and the prophetic significance of them. Um, we are going to be able to uh, give you a chance to interact with us if you go on the website. If you're watching on YouTube, we can't interact with you there. But if you go on our website, dreamsnetwork.tv, you'll see a chat button and you can hit that button and actually log on to our chat box and um which is right here i have it right here all right <laughs> so we can chat we also have a, a phone line set up and uh, toward the end of the program we'll we'll open that up for you if you'd like to call and uh, and do that as well so without further ado what are we talking about tonight well as usual we're, we're out of season here well, <laughs> but we're instant Right, we're in, in, in season. Or out. Because to me, when it comes to the Jewish feast, you know, I'm not as much a stickler as other people in, to set, to bring the meaning of it to a certain date or a oh. certain time of year. Okay. Because to me, Jesus is the feast. He fulfills the feast. Gotcha. And we have Jesus all the time. Okay. So God can give you a truth from any one of the feasts. Right. See, maybe you need the blood of Jesus in December for forgiveness. Right. Right. But we're not. It's not Passover time. It's no. not the season. Right. But but there there are times you know that I need to tabernacle with God right. in in January. True. So to me, it's not all about the prophetic calendar. There there is significance in that. Sure. But to me, everything points to Jesus, and we have Jesus all the time. Mm. Yeah. And that's great because obviously, right, as you say, you know, we want to be able to apply these truths as we need them. So to have a good foundation in, in what God's saying through these things. Yeah, that's awesome. So we're looking at the festival of Purim. Purim. Yeah. And um, in, in the future week, we'll talk about why it's called Purim. Purim is actually a Hebrew word that means lots, you know, like drawing lots. Really? So, wow. for example, when you have like three straws and you draw mm. the short one, the other mm. one that's got to gotta go do so, all the cooking. Whatever. So this is a celebration of gambling? <laughs> well, that's why I said we're going to leave that for, for a uh, future week. Because there's always a wise guy in every crowd, well, so I think I'll leave it. For inquiring another. minds want to know. I mean, but know. then you'll have to tune in that day when we talk about it. Mean, this could be a whole new revelation here about you know, God's provision. Because <laughs> they drew lots in the New Testament as well. Anyway, let's just forget that oh. because we're... <laughs> Moving right along. Okay. Here we go. Now that you got me in hot water. If my pastor is watching, it's not me. It's just yes. the guy that looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> now right we have then. the real pastor. Come back. <laughs> wow. We're having fun. We haven't even started yet. <laughs> Take it away before okay, I get any right, worse. But, but here is what I do want to emphasize today about the festival of Purim, which is taken from the book of Esther, from the Old Testament. And there's something unusual about the book of Esther that's different than every other book of the Bible, to the point where there were people in ancient times who believed that this book shouldn't even be in the Bible. So does anyone know what that is? Yes. Does it mention God? Right, it doesn't mention God's name at all. It's amazing. But yet, 
throughout the whole book, you see the hand of God. Yeah. God is God is working even when you don't know it, when you don't yeah, see it. If you if you people come, oh, I'm going through the desert. Mm -hmm. God has forgot about me. Mm -hmm. He's far away. Yeah. Yeah. But they're forgetting one thing, and he and he has a fancy word for those who are watching. I usually don't like to use Christianese too much, but we want to also teach people once in a while words that they can impress their friends with. <laughs> and cool. here's the word, providence. It's the providence of God. What is providence? Here's the International Standard um, Bible says that providence is that preservation, care, and government which God exercises over all things that he has created in order that they may accomplish the ends for which they were created. In other words, God is always working behind the scenes, orchestrating. And he is saying he orchestrates history. He orchestrates even the nations. He tears down one ruler, puts up another ruler. He, he establishes, he, he uproots, but, but here in the book of Esther, it's applied to the nation, but it's also applied to the individual life. Can you imagine that, that God takes the care every day, mm -hmm. if you really think of it, that every day God takes the, throughout your whole day working to make sure that your destiny comes to pass and that his purpose will be performed Thank in your you, life. Yes. Uh, in Song of Solomon 2.6, it's, speak, it's speaking about the bridegroom, which symbolically is Jesus. It says, his left hand is under my head and his right hand does embrace me. See, his right hand under my head, I see that, right? Mm -hmm. I know it when somebody prays for me and I'm healed. Mm -hmm. I know it when, when, when they st all of a sudden I reach in my pocket and there's a hundred dollar bill that was there. Mm -hmm. That's his right hand yeah. working miracles. I see that. But his left hand under your head, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. But he's sustaining you. He's upholding you. Even even when you feel like he totally forgot that you exist, wow. that it, that that's where the whole scripture in Romans eight twenty eight, where it says, "We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him and have been called according to His purpose." It says, "All things, no matter what bad, horrible thing, no matter how." The enemy might be attacking you. God is working already behind the scenes to turn things around to, so that it will work for your good. Mm -hmm. It does. It's always important to mention that it doesn't mean that those bad things that are happening, those sicknesses, the financial lack, we're saying that it's not God who is the author of those things. So I always make sure I, I, I qualify that. I don't want people to think, oh, well, God made me sick because he has a purpose for it. That's not what the providence of God is. The providence of God is whatever happened. No matter if I mess up my my own life, if I made the stupidest blunder, if, if I'm serving God, living holy, and the enemy's coming at me from every angle, in the midst of that, God God is doing a powerful work. I think that's him calling right now. <laughs> How did he have the number? Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Maybe somebody call him in. Yeah. Well, they are, but we're not ready for that. So oh. let's see. Um, well, if you, if you those who are watching, um, if you could call a little later, um, when we get into that time of the show for taking phone calls. The, the pizza still in the oven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll open up the phone line at probably around quarter to uh, the hour. So uh, hold tight. Mm-hmm. 
So um, instead of me sitting here and talking anymore, what we want to do is have a discussion. That's the whole purpose. So, in other words, no matter what things look like, God is working in the midst of your situation to turn things around for your good. So, so in that case, what should our mindset be when we are under attack? Or I just did the dumbest thing. <laughs> Sometimes I say something and, and five, two minutes, oh, how did they, oh, and everything's going to be messed up. <laughs> In the midst of that, should my mindset be, now I'm in trouble, this is it, this is checkmate now, I, everything's destroyed. What, how should I begin to, to think in, in those Staying situations? In his and walk in his, in, in, with faith, staying in his presence and trusting God that whatever it is, is not big for God because he's the God that takes care of all things. No matter how hard it, it seems, at times when you see that you are all by yourself, God is right there with you. Always there with you. Just focus focus on God. But how, how do we do that? How do we align our minds with God, with God's mind when we're going through this stuff? What, what are some things that we can do? Well... I keep on just saying certain scriptures, like the weapon for me, so you will prosper. And I keep on saying it over and over again. I said, you're not going to get me to believe that you have the victory. And then I think of, you know, if God created everything, you know, and I'm his child, and he, he goes before me, and, and he, he, pray, he, he takes care of my battles. He fights my battles for me. I mean, I started doing this thing with the names of God and all the things that he is, and I keep on declaring that, and I said, he's going before me, and it doesn't matter what the enemy might be doing against me. God knows, and I will have the victory because he's going to fight my battles. I'm not going to fight my battles. He's going to fight them for me. So I, it, I have to just trust him that he, he knows, he sees all things, and that he'll take care of the situation and place it back in his hands. It's not easy sometimes, but you know, I'd rather have him fighting my battles than me. <laughs> <laughs> Another one staying in the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, because it seems like the... And such an important part of it is, is is your thoughts, the way that you think. Because you, if your thoughts are not aligned with God, what what would happen if I if I'm thinking one way and God's thinking another way? How do we end up? Confused individual. <laughs> that's, right. yeah, that's true. <laughs> You're going to end up jacked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, snap. Uh, right. yeah. Rabbi got run, run over by the... By the <laughs> yeah. I said, you're going to end up. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so just today, I had some, you know, hard news. And then the scripture came where it says, a righteous man has no fear of bad news. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I'm interested to hear from you. When I get bad news, my first thought is, oh, oh that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm all done. Mm -hmm. And then I have to, <laughs> how, how about you? It happens once in a while in my life. But then I say, mm -mm. Then I start looking for scriptures or I pray because I can't. I have to I have to be constantly reminding me that I serve a living God. I can't have that doubt. And it's a daily basis. It's a struggle. I mean, but just today I had bad news. But I said, you know what, Lord? I ain't even going to fit into it. I know you already told me it's taken care of. Sometimes you have to turn the other way. It's hard at times when you have to do it, but you got to do what God says. He tells you, okay, don't get involved. This is my mess, not your mess. 
I find that for me personally, I have to convince myself sometimes, depending on uh, the situation, mm -hmm. depending on the hard situation, what it may be. Some things may be very quick for me to just focus totally on God, and some things I have to like go through this whole ritual of going into the worship, opening up the Bible, or just staying there quiet before the Lord, you know, because some mm -hmm. things sometimes mm -hmm. it's like the human side of me says, like, oh, everything yeah. goes crazy. But when the Holy Spirit picks in on me, it's like peace. And then that's when mm -hmm. I can go into that place mm -hmm. with God and find comfort, you know. But if I'm outside of the box, outside of God, it's like chaos for me, <laughs> depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah. That's how it is for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, listen, that's, I think every one of us is in process. Yeah. Nobody's got this all down me. perfect, right? <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> Not me. No. Yeah, right? I think that, um, you know, when where we start out determines where we're going to end. And if our starting place is the goodness of God, then our ending is going to end. You know, we're, gonna, we're in a good place. We're in a good direction. If that's our foundation, that, you know. Uh, when folks don't have that settled, uh, you know, assurance that God is good, he's always good, and then, mm -hmm. you know, then the, you, you have the doubts. I mean, I was talking with someone uh, the other day, and, um, you know, they're going through a very difficult season in their life. They lost their job, uh, both their parents got sick, uh, you know, and, and just all kinds of not nonsense, you know, that just sometimes happens in life. And and one of the words that, you know, one of the things that came out of her mouth was, you know, you know, is God punishing me? Mm, you yes. know, did I mess up? Did I miss something? Did, you know, and so that perspective is very common and, and very real, mm -hmm. you know. And if we don't move out of that into a place of, of knowing that, He's always good. He doesn't punish us, you know. He's punished. He punished Jesus enough, <laughs> you know, to, to satisfy, you know. So any any things that are going on that's difficult in our life, it's not because he sent that thing, you know. You know how people they like to refer to Job, you yes. know, and, and talk about Job Job's lot. example. <laughs> yeah, right. And I mean, one of the best responses to that I ever heard was I'm not sure who it was that said this but it says well you can be the you can be a disciple of Job I'm going to be a disciple of Jesus that's right. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> that's good. but that's you know that's the decision that you're making is you know who are you looking to for for your reality you know we either and a lot of folks what we still try to we operate as if we're still trying to um, achieve victory Instead of the victory already being won, you know. So it's just some thoughts thrown out there. Well, I'll, I'll just be authentic. <laughs> um, since I want to really get real, one thing that I tend to struggle with is um, when when I get you know start going through a difficult situation, I start to think, well, let me think of plan A, B, C, just in case God doesn't work. But I know this guy there, he's going to lend me the money, or, or that other person, they're going to help me out. Or if that ministry falls through, maybe there's this pastor I can call to help me. But you know what I found? People, if you rely on, on man to help you, I'm in trouble. I don't know about anyone else, but whenever I depend on, I find that man's got nothing for me. That's right. That's right. Amen to that one. I always go back to the scripture with Elijah when Elijah told him to follow him. And he took all his farming equipment and, and he took an axe and he broke it up. And he used it for the for the altar for the sacrifice. Yes. In other words, he left himself no other options except to trust God. Yeah. That's something. Wow. <laughs> but see, see, that's something. You know, I'm I'm not going to tell you. I always just get in the word, and I'm. 
You know, I spend yeah. a lot of times I I wake up at night and I start thinking. Yeah. Well, who, you know, well, what if God does come through? <laughs> yeah. I I know a guy I could borrow money from them. Yeah. And those plans, you know, it, and God always convicts me every time. <laughs> you know, the there is no plan being God. It's it's trust God or or yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's true. I, I have something to share. Um <clears throat> and it has to do I, I believe it has to do a lot of faith and trusting in, in God. Um and it has to do with my new job. Um I've been out of work since April twenty sixth of two thousand thirteen. And my I'm, I've been unemployment but my unemployment the last unemployment I would get would be next month, the beginning of next month. And through this whole process, I haven't been looking for work. I've been busy on my school and stuff and doing ministry, you know, going to the hospital, praying for people and stuff like that. And even through all that, I've been blessing people as their, their needs mm -hmm. and trusting in God and believing. And I stand in his word when he said he is my provider and I will lack nothing in my home. He oh, is my man. provider. And to all this, um, one of my old boss um, had asked me about two months ago if I would come and work for him and work second shift. And I told him no because I, I want to be away from the word encounter and then everything else because I'm committed to this. This came first. Wow. I'm committed to this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was with, you know, good pay, but I told him, no, I had to tell him that. He asked me why, and I told him. I said, listen, I'm involved with ministry now, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's something that just came up now, and, you know, I'm really, like, I'm I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. Yeah. And I told him, thank you anyway. And he said, well, I respect that. So then um, uh, um about two two weeks ago, three weeks ago, because it's going to be my third week at work, Three weeks ago, um, Iliani, uh, uh, she used to work with me in the old job. I knew Iliani when I started with the old company, <clears throat> Merle. And uh, she called me. She said, well, Sita, you got to come. Um, Jesus wants to talk to you. Call him. He wants to, make, you know, discuss something with you. I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll call him. And I wasn't, in, I wasn't looking for it. <laughs> That's how good God is. I wasn't looking for it. So I called Jesus, and um, he said um, that he wanted to discuss with me about a job mm. that would I come in. And I said, sure, I went in on a Wednesday, and he told me um, if I would come second shift. And I told him, uh, you know, I can't do no second shift. <laughs> so then he said, okay, I have first shift. I have an opening first shift from 8.30 to 4. It's a part-time, but you're doing, you're going to be doing uh, 40 hours and over. So it's really, it's really a full-time. How full is that part-time? No, it's, it's really 40 <laughs> hours. The only thing is I don't have no benefits right now because the company... <sighs> And starting back up because gotcha. they was going to go under one time so it's coming back up so um so they're rebuilding it so i said sure i mean wow you know and it was all good timing because my unemployment finished next month and i wasn't looking for it. that's how good and awesome god is he's faithful to you mm. yeah. and through all that I was able to bless people. Mm -hmm. Through all of that, I didn't lack nothing in my home. Through all of that, my bills was being paid. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? But standing in worship, mm -hmm. being in His presence, in His worship, yeah. at, 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 like, like the best time for me is nighttime when everybody's asleep. That's me and God. That's when I spend my time with Him. Mm -hmm. Being in His Word, even going to school, I mean, being faithful to the things of God. God never lets you know he he don't he don't fail you. No. There's no way God fails you. Yeah. So it has to do yeah. faith, have to do mm -hmm. trusting in Him, leaning on Him, yeah. and all things. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I forgot about I needed a job. I really did. I forgot. I wasn't like, oh my God, next month is my last pay, and what I'm gonna do? How I'm gonna pay? Never, yeah. never. That thought never. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that the God I serve, he's my provider. Some way or another, yeah. he was going to take care of that <laughs> as long as I could take care of his thing. He's an on time. Yes, God. he is. He on, is time. on time. Amen. <laughs> but see, that's going back to the whole theme of, of the book of Esther. See, you didn't pick out a job and then walk around the place seven times and, <laughs> and then blow the trumpet 
You know, you were in fasting and praying over this place. I declare favor over. That's just coming. Wait, wait, wait. What, what, what's wrong with that? <laughs> well, I'm not saying. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'll, I'll do it. You want to do it? I'll go with you. But I'm, so I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being intentional and praying and believing for a miracle if God leads you to do that. Yeah, right. But here's that's the providence of God. Mm. Well, you were you were just going about your business. You were even thinking of this place and there was God putting everything together mm -hmm. and maybe he was even the one behind putting that business back up just to be a blessing yeah, to you because right. he's, he he was moved by by your heart wow wow, wow. That's good. and the awesome thing about it these are all people that i know i mean Tessu was my old boss wow. and i used to be his assistant mm. and then the other two people there's a guy there that i just find out we went to school together from Rutgers and started the old job together oh in different wow. places so you know it was i say it was the mm. hand of god i guess so <laughs> thank you that's, Lord. That's well, so see, so thank see you how Jesus. god puts yeah. things together he touches the heart of the of the board the bible says the heart of the king is in the hands of the lord yeah. he, he, even though it wasn't that kind of miracle mm. that that's why i like it. out of all the people in the bible i'm the most impressed with john the baptist because he he went and had this big revival, didn't do one miracle, and just yelled. At, he just yelled at people. He pent you bunch of snakes and you brood of vipers. <laughs> he, he That's my kind of he didn't, he didn't do a single miracle, and he had the greatest revival in the history of Israel. Well, uh, what about Jonah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he hated the people he was talking to. <laughs> Still at the end, he wanted to he, he, he couldn't. He didn't even yeah. want to go. He hated the people so much. Oh, he didn't do any. He just said, "Get ready, you're all gonna die," and the whole nation. Well, yeah. to God. Well, listen, it also it helped the fact that he looked like an albino after being in the whale's stomach. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. His skin's all bleached. Can you just picture that? He's like, all that. I mean, it, that, all that mucus is, uh, You know that had to be happy that people look at him and go, uh, smelly, no, uh, yeah. what is that? <laughs> what is yeah, that? not to mention the smell, of course. <laughs> Of course. So, I, I mean, I love miracle. You know, I love to see God's hand at work. I love to see people laying hands. And uh, I want to see greater things. I want to see, whole, whole, you know, whole cities turn, turn to God. You know, I'm believing for greater miracles, obvious miracles. But I, I'm learning to be just as impressed with stories <laughs> like yours where no, nobody prayed for miracles. <laughs> You know, there was no expectation. You were just going about what God called you to do, and things started to line into yes. place. Yes. Does Does anyone else have a? I love that story. Does anyone else have a story where where God did something in your life unexpected? I. What I'm going to say, I say it's unexpected because um, on Sunday night when we were in service, the last person I prayed for was for my sister to be set free from addiction. <clears throat> and she was missing for a couple of months there. And um, Monday uh, afternoon, I was at the beach and I got the bad news that she was fighting for her life. And that was Sunday night. I prayed for her and Monday morning she's in the hospital. Thank God someone found her and she was taken to the hospital. Um, I was a little bit scared, but then God said, God spoke to me that night. He said, I'm, I've taken care of this. Um, I said, Lord, I know she's going to live. And that was, it's, it's, she's still in the hospital, <clears throat> but she's better. I mean, I'm not going to say she's 100%, but she's fighting. But what's good about it now, God is right there with her because when I went to the hospital, I prayed for her. And um, my fear was that when I lost my other sister in 2006, I didn't get a chance to pray for her. I didn't make it on time because she she passed on um, before I even got there. So this time I got there, I prayed for her and I laid hands on her. And the next, the next day when I went yesterday, 
Jesus, Lord Father. I got a good report that she didn't need the blood transfusion. She was eating on her own, and she's practically starting to breathe on her own. And um, I took my phone with me that my daughter has sent a worship song that says in Spanish, lift up your hands and give thanks to the Lord. And I, out of, out of all times, my phone was working right yesterday when I set the song up, and she just lifted her hands, and she and I said, so what you're going to do? And I said, well, the first thing that I'm going to do when I, got it, when I get out of here is thank the Lord because he gave me another opportunity. And for me to hear that, that was like, whoa, hmm. because I've been dealing with her with 20, 20 years already of addiction. So, you know, and her daughter was there. She met her granddaughter for the first time. And God, I know God, it's already, God did the miracle already in her. He did, he's, you know, what I saw there was something that I never saw before. I mean, she's been many, many times in the hospital, but this time was totally different. I can't even explain it. It was, and I'm, I'm, I'm trembling as I'm speaking because I, I felt the presence of God there, and it was just amazing, just just amazing, what I saw. And it, I can't even explain it. But it's just it was just awesome. So even though you were you didn't even know where she was, and there was the hand of God, God putting yeah. people to find to her. To find her, yeah. And you know, if you tell someone who didn't believe in God, oh, it's just a coincidence. No, yeah. no How many coincidences? <laughs> One other thing. How many coincidences does, no, does it take to convince an atheist? There's no coincidence in God. Everything is done within his timing and for a purpose. Yeah. And I know he has a purpose for my sister. Amen. Because she's going to say those other people are there that have addiction and issues. She's going to a testimony to set them free. Yeah, that's awesome. Because her mess is gonna be a message for everyone out there. That yes, you can see one thing. God just told me there's no buts or if in Jesus, but can, will, and will be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, why don't you just? I just felt from the Lord that you know, just look in the camera. Maybe there are people out there, you know, who are dealing also with family members, and uh, you know, who are lost or sick. See, you, you, when you have a breakthrough, I believe it gives you greater faith and authority yes. to release it to someone else. I just want to say that not only my sister was delivered from drugs, I also was a drug user for many years. And God, here I am by his grace, 25 years later, serving the Lord and know that there is a God. Even at times where you're in that place, in that darkness, in that room, in that basement, in the woods, wherever you are right now, God is there with you. And he's calling you right now because he is a deliverance. He wants to set you free, just like he set my sister free, just like he set me free, just like he set my son free. He wants to set you free. He wants you to have peace in the heart. All you have to do is call the name of Jesus. He's there right now. All you have to do is call on him. Give him to him, and he's going to take care of everything. No matter what pain you're going through right now, you don't need that drug. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you are free indeed tonight. Yes. That you are free of drugs, of alcohol. You are free right now. Whoever the listeners are, you're more than welcome to call later when the, phones, the line, our phone lines open. But trust and believe that you are free. Jesus said you're free tonight. The Lord is saying, I have set you free. No more years of struggling. You are free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So listen, let's just take a quick break. We're going to take about a 60-second break. And uh, when we come back, we'll uh, continue this and maybe take some questions or calls.
Are you an inventor, entrepreneur, business owner, or anyone called to serve in the marketplace? If so, you're invited to a free seminar called the Joseph Anointing Roundtable, June 7 from 2 to 4 p.m. We want to help you discover how God can use you to release His kingdom into the marketplace. Go to KingdomTI.com for details and directions. That's KingdomTI.com. Okay, well, we're back, and where do you want to go from here? Uh, I was just as she was, you know, I know we diverged a little bit on the top, but no, um, just for you as someone who does um, coaching, you know, in life, how, how would you coach someone that's struggling maybe with addiction or an area of their life? You know, one thing, we pray, we do deliverance, right. but, um, you know... In, just to hit it from another angle, I'd be interested to hear how how would you deal with that? Somebody comes to you. With yeah, that. well, there's there's a, a huge difference between coaching and counseling. And you know, someone that's coming with a major life issue like addiction, they they're not really a candidate for coaching because that's a process where you know you you help someone clarify their goals and and figure out you know how to get where God's calling them to go. And so you've got to have a certain level of health, you know, mm -hmm. in your life mm -hmm. in order to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. When you don't have that, you're in survival mode. And all you can do is think about how do I get day to day? You know, how am I going to make it till tomorrow or mm -hmm. <laughs> next week? You know, so someone of that, you know, I would definitely um, refer them to you know, someone that, that specializes right. in, yes, in that kind do you of, have, do you, you know. Is there anyone you could recommend, you know, the people watching? In terms it? of addiction, um, my good friend Bill Hoffman, uh, he uh, runs a counseling center in Elizabeth. And um, I think it's Tri-State Christian Counseling, if I'm not mistaken. You can look it up. You can Google him. <laughs> His name is okay. Bill Hoffman. Tri-State. Tri-State Tri Christian State. Counseling. I think that's the name. Um so I would, you know, recommend him right off the bat. And then, of course, uh, Streetlight Mission in Elizabeth also does a lot of work with uh, homeless and, and addiction folks. They have a, a Christian program. Um, mm -hmm. What's the name of it? I can't think of it now. Uh, Celebrate Recovery. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not a 12-step. It's a one step because it's Jesus. <laughs> the man. Celebrate me, Oh, yeah. he's the higher power. Yeah, he's right, right. They don't, they don't <laughs> talk about a higher power. They talk about Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to read another scripture and talk about something. Probably I've gotten <clears throat> more trouble in in ministry really? than anything else. Does it? I'm shocked. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> it's not your preaching; it's your jokes. You know? <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Let's see here, Isaiah chapter thirty, verse fifteen. It says, "In returning," I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, so that's why we don't need a microphone. Well, it's the Amplified Bible. You know, they, you, know, you know what they also say about the Amplified Bible? What? It's the women's Bible. Oh, because it's a lot of words? <laughs> Is that the one? That's what they say. I didn't say I say Wait, that. can you add a tape when it's live? Because... I'm not going to go home tonight. My wife is going to... the phone's gonna... linking, you should be... Right <laughs> exactly. Did we lose all our watchers here? <laughs> all our viewers? <laughs> no, I didn't say I said that. It's they. Oh, they. It's, it's always they. Go ahead. I hope Juan had nothing to do with that. But they. I hope he's not part of the day. He's too quiet. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let me read it again here. Please In do. the Amplified Bible... Um, in returning to me and resting in me, you shall be saved. In quietness and in trusting confidence shall be your strength. Which speaks to me, um, at least in part, that this scripture speaks about a certain type of prayer, a certain way of getting in God's presence and resting in his presence, laying down in his presence, <laughs> 
mm. soaking in his presence, yeah. letting him fight for you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And wow. like I said, I get, that's one thing that I teach that I get more beat up for than anything. Oh, the other, that's just a waste of time. No, we need to be crying. But what, 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 What's a waste of time? Being quiet in the Lord's presence. That's the kind of stuff, you know. Oh, really? pe I, people even told me that's witchcraft. Oh, wow. meditating on the Lord. That's yeah. meditation. Oh, even okay. though it's, <laughs> over, it's all over on the internet. On the um, people, Somebody watched a, a show, like a, a major Christian show, where, where the um, pastor's wife came on and said, soaking is is demonic because um because you're doing meditation even though psalm 119 <laughs> speaks so i meditated yeah, in the bed i sat yeah. in my bed and wow and, and, and most and so many christians see this as this is a waste of no you need to pray you need to scream you need and, and I do that too, you know, I get pretty loud, just like Jesus, he says he cried out to the Father with many tears, you know, mm -hmm. with loud cries. There's a time for that, sure. But that's not what I do most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time I put on worship music and I get involved in intimacy with the Lord and I begin to believe that he's gonna solve that problem. Yeah. He's gonna break through my financial yeah. issue. He's gonna Dude, deal with that Hallelujah. ministry situation yes, that I Lord. have no way yeah. to deal with. Wow, wow, yep. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But why do people see that as a, one time, this is years ago when we tried doing this. We had a prayer meeting, and, and this one lady, she got agitated. This isn't prayer, and she just got up and started yelling to God and started pacing back. <laughs> she just couldn't tolerate it. <laughs> you know, the, she, people just, oh, I got to be doing something. I got to strive. I got to make something happen. All right, guys, what is that? Come on, you know. Religious religion. Yes. <laughs> we religious no longer spirit. are in religious. Yeah. Uh, it's a religious spirit. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah, it is. Religious spirit. Thank uh, you, Lord. We are free, 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 free in you. So what do you think, Jackie? Is that a waste of time when I just spend most of my time not facing the devil? Hmm. I don't spend most of my time facing the devil. I don't spend most of my time screaming. I spend most of my time doing what this scripture says. See, it's yeah. right here. You see, it's right here in the Amplified Bible. Yeah, the Bible. Resting in quietness <laughs> and in has to be true. confidence yeah. shall be your... It says in quietness. Quietness. Yes. yes. I must say that this is something that the Lord just has me doing now amen amen i'm in that place now and um and i and, and i'm not ashamed to say that when i first heard him tell me this i thought he wanted me to step down and stop doing everything that i was doing but he revealed to me no that's not what i'm saying i just want you to come into a place of rest and of quietness in me so that's where i'm at now and i love it because there's sometimes i just want to just block everything i'll just listen you know and just listen mm -hmm. and so that's where i'm at right now um i'm all for yelling and all that but there's yeah. a time and a place for that and my time right now is in the resting and the quietness in him mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah memorial day i went over someone's house and they were and we were sitting in the backyard and their house was adjacent to the river and they were across from the river there were these trees and there was this big bird was it and i so a I, big what a big bird in this tree cool and they said well it's um it was a, it they thought it was a um, it's a heron uh -huh. but i went and i researched so i'm researching all this stuff because you know when the lord says you know rest and if he takes care of the birds and, and, and everything else why should we worry so here this gigantic bird and had this very long beak and he had a bald spot and patchy hair and his neck was all twisted and he was huge he, he was like you know maybe this big and he was gray wow. and he just sat and he just perched 
And I and then I realized I, I researched it was mating season, so maybe you know it was solitary. So they said they're, they're usually in flocks, but now in May, it's her mating season. And this bird had such majesty, had such peace, and was totally at rest. And I said, this is what he means when he says just rest in me. This bird did not have a care in the world, and it was a bird. It, was, it wasn't a person, <laughs> right. you know. <laughs> It was it, it's it's a bird, and I said, "Well, that's what he's telling us to do to be in, you know." And he's been telling me the same thing, you know. And I'm like, "Well, I'm, I'm like, I I hate to say that I'm works oriented, but you know, I, I kind of like ask, well, what's next?" And he's like showing me my yard and peace and just resting, and then all I could focus on that day was this bird. So I, I know he's going to give me some type of writing about it because I was researching it and. And, you know, I was, like, obsessed. I had to find out what type it was and all this stuff, you know. Went to the Audubon book, all the different things. There's a message there. Yeah. <laughs> and all he's trying to do is get you to relax. And here you are doing all this research. That's <laughs> 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 what he was also showing me, too. Like, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> well, that's true. Although it did kind of strike me as yeah. funny that, you know, it's like, Show you this peaceful picture. And I just thought, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but that's that's our typical. That's good, yeah, I mean, I'm the good. same way. That's you know, you, you want to know. Yeah. You get excited hey, actually, about something. Yeah. On like, Saturday, we went to the park. I saw two fishes in the clouds. You saw what? Two fishes in the clouds. Oh, oh. And, and then one thing was swimming. <laughs> And when we went around the park, it's true, right, Jackie? We yeah, saw yeah. a fisherman, and he had fishes inside his bucket. And we Ooh. ministered to the guy. Which is why he was probably fishing, because he had <laughs> <laughs> some fish. <laughs> you act like I that was no, we know that's good though. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. You should have told him go on the other side and just pull out this big, big, big giant <laughs> cat <laughs> on the other side. Throw your hook on the other side. <laughs> 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 just put them down and you're gonna pull out. Oh, now we got one in the picture. <laughs> they multiply. <laughs> exactly. Oh, oh God. That's now, good. If, if anyone wants a, that person wants. Wants to call back again? Um, if if you dare. Wants to call. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you dare, call us back. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, there, there, there's a scripture with David where he says, I quiet my soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, why would he quiet his soul with all the responsibilities? Doesn't he have to figure out how to run a nation? How to, he's got enemies all but, over. But I think at that time he was quieting his soul to just to uh, meditate on God and, and worship, just him and God alone. Yeah. Sometimes we have to you do that. You need that. Yeah. Sure. I know I need it. Me too, definitely, definitely, especially on Sunday. Well, on Sunday we need. <laughs> I'm sorry. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> it's funny that even in the Old Testament that most of the battles it seemed like when they asked God for a strategy, mm -hmm. the strategy was to go to send the worshipers. Yeah. <laughs> go go start to worship. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And he told them to fast, which makes no sense either, because you're actually weakening yourself by fasting. See, to me, that's one of the powers of fasting. Mm -hmm. When you fast, you're weakening yourself and telling God, I, you know, I'm not, I can't do it in my own strength. I'm trusting in you your strength. I'm resting in you. Yes. Yeah. Some people make fasting into even more striving than anything else, and a competition. You, what? You only fasted three days? That's not. Oh, we do 40 days twice a year. You did three days. What? Oh. You did 21 days? Oh, oh, oh no. And, and you didn't you didn't drink just water you had oh like, yeah yeah <laughs> uh, we have a comment that uh, came through that uh, they were saying that Bill Johnson uh, says he doesn't react to the devil but rather responds to Jesus yeah. and I think 
I think if, if I'm not mistaken, the quote he, he uses often is he pays attention to the devil long enough to pull the trigger. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so well, otherwise, he doesn't even pay attention, which I think is good. Yeah. You know, you shouldn't pay attention to the devil mess. I mean, he the enemy just wants the attention. Mm -hmm. So until we Give need God, to, we're not going to pay attention to him. Right? <laughs> yeah. God, God. Yeah. The well, the problem is you can't outwit the devil. You can't fight the devil in your own strength. But he's, if you get in a conversation with the devil, you're always going to come out behind every time. Jesus yeah. didn't get into a conversation. He just quoted scripture. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So the Bible says there's a time for everything. You know, there's a yeah. time for war and a time. In other words, there is times in my life. I mean, again, I spend most of my time facing God, rest, but there are times and days where I get up and I say, devil, I come against your word. Mm -hmm. Get out of my house now in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Yeah. See, there's a time for yeah, everything. Time but, but I'm saying, you know, our general attitude towards prayer, towards towards sure. God. I, I believe we need to enter into his rest. That yes. Yes. Entering yes. into his rest is not about an argument. Should we worship on Saturday or Sunday? Which day do we? That be rest day. has to be a yes. lifestyle and it all goes back to Esther. Yes. How does it go back to Esther? I trust him that in my worst day, he's yes. doing something. That's I don't right. see what he's doing. I can't see anything. I That's might right. be blinded with pain, but I trust, I believe that he's on, he's working on my behalf. Yeah. I don't do that perfectly, like you said before, yeah. but I always, God always brings me back to that. Yep. It's true. And I think, you know, one of the also, one of the other things I believe the Lord's trying to help us with is that we, we've kind of grown up with this, this isolation culture. And I, I keep coming back to the issue of isolation, how the enemy will move, you know, to separate us yes. or, or to, to yeah. cause us to think that, we, you know, I'm going to do this, you know, me and Jesus. And there's times when that's just not going to work because you, we need each other. We need to be vulnerable and say, hey, you know what? I'm just going through something right now. And, and maybe I can't tell you about it because I just don't understand it yet or whatever. But, you know, the willingness to be vulnerable, you know, in those times releases a grace from God. Why? Because what, you're humbling yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm humbling myself to say, hey, you know what? I don't have it all together. That's right. You know, I know I look like it, <laughs> I but I really don't. You know, and and to and to be willing to you know ask for prayer support or or just even just to to talk, right? Yeah. Sometimes you just need to kind of hear yourself talk, and you can do that by yourself as well. As well, but what if you say something stupid? Who's going to correct you exactly? Right? So, so I, I mean, it's you know, you, you want to have that that kind of, of you know. So I'm encouraging people so much right now to be very strategic, very purposeful. Maybe intentional is a better word of of just seeing who God has connected you to, or who He wants you to be connected to, so that you have that that support there because otherwise it can be harder than it needs to be it really can be i mean that when you're isolated you know it's almost like you've got a bigger target painted on your back for the enemy to you know to aim at you know so and that's sense. where you have to have trusted people to share with. well yes Other, otherwise you get you get the other knife right on the other Right in the back of the well, well, you, uh, oh, well, you wouldn't have this problem if you would have prayed more or if you was in the Word. Yeah. This is happening. You don't know your Word. Yeah. And they take the Bible as a sword and they stick it in your back. It's supposed to be a sword against the enemy. Yeah, that's true. So we also have to create a culture where it's safe to share with people. Right. Mm -hmm. And listen, that's that's a huge value that we have that we're trying to you know, uh, engender, we're trying to make that 
part of who we are because it's part it's it's the culture of honor right it's the culture that sustains a revival you know in the midst is that when we honor each other and, and you know become vulnerable so a couple other comments from uh from the internet here uh it says esther soaked and god moved in her life that's true because how long did she spend before before yeah, she became months. actually that's next yeah. next oh, we're next talk time about, i'm here oh we get to talk, about, talk the, about the, the perfumes and the, and the soaking oh, all right why um, she served in the myrrh which is her representing death oh, okay we'll get to that the next and time. then the final comment here is when we rest god works but when we work god rests i like that that's mm. <laughs> not totally you know i mean that's kind of like taking it to the extreme because there's a partnership that the lord you know has for us to yeah well, hard work, work is not bad right it's it's your motive and why you're working you know i mean i want to do more work for the lord in the rest of my life than mm -hmm. i've done up to now i, I want to accomplish more things but i don't want to do it because i have to please god right. or i don't want to work and and do things because I'm not trusting God and I feel like I got to make something happen. Yeah. But in, like you said, in partnering with God, hard work. Is, I, I love when people work to see Christians, you know, really want to work and serve God and really yeah. get out there. Well, there's a joy in it because what you're doing flows out of that relationship with him, flows out of who you really are. And so there's a real joy in, in all of that. Um, all right, well, and we do have a couple minutes left if anyone would like to uh, to call and share some thoughts or questions. Um, appreciate you guys chatting with us uh, through the chat box. Um, so uh, that should be fun. And uh, what else? Anything else? I mean, this whole thing of resting always brings me back to, you know, Jesus and Mark 11. You know, come to me. If you're weary and heavy laden, then I will give you rest, you know. And in the context of his day, of course, the weariness and, and the, the, the weights were from the law. Were from, you know, how he said to the Pharisees, you know, you, you bind up heavy weights. You don't lift a finger. Yeah, and the people are just carrying you. Yeah, you know, to help them. And that's, you know, that was the major. Con and so what are we talking about? We're talking about working yeah. in your own strength. <laughs> Because Jesus right. worked hard day and night, so it's yeah. not about not doing any. Some people mistake this, so yeah. that's why I'm clarifying it. Some people sure. say, because they tell me, oh, you don't need to do all this. No, God told me to do it. I'm doing, I love doing things. You know, the, you know, I don't mind, you know, working hours and, and yeah. you know, and being stretched. Yeah. It, it's again those things that God didn't call me to do or things yes. I'm doing, like you said, and on my own. I, I think it's, there's a difference between working because God is telling you to do something and working because you're trying to strive and achieve something. Yes. And that's when the strive, it becomes striving and, and you're doing it in your own strength. Yeah. Trying to obtain something that's already there for you uh, as opposed to where you're doing something because God told you to do it and now you're just being obedient. Mm hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. You. you can make a case that when Paul talks about building on the foundation of Jesus with wood, hay, or stubble, as opposed to gold, silver, and precious stones, right? That building with those inferior materials is a sign that it's your mm -hmm. own work. Mm -hmm. It's your own agenda, your own plans that may seem wonderful and good you know when you first think of them but if they weren't something that came out of the heart of the father they weren't birthed out of mm -hmm. you know his purpose and destiny for your life then it it's all going to burn mm -hmm. you know because it's not you know made of gold silver precious stone so how do we get on that subject but that's because <laughs> they're talking about rest in the, the lord, lord yeah exactly Cool. I just want to say one thing. Please do. Um, as we're sitting here and you were speaking about briefly about isolation, I got the word shame. And mm. I don't just want to speak to whoever's listening or watching that yeah. if you're struggling 
for shame that we break that right now in the name mm. of Jesus yes, because Lord. shame is one of the things the enemy used to isolate yes. you yes. from everyone else yes. from those that love you and so we break that now in the name Lord. of Jesus mm. and we declare you free yes. free to, to rest quietly in the Lord without shame yes. and to come before him and just Mm. Be free with him and just yes. say, listen, I messed up, Lord, and I need you mm. to help me. Yes. Or it may, maybe it's not even that case. Maybe you just want to reevaluate yourself before him. Mm -hmm. And you're free to do that is yeah. what I'm hearing the Lord say. Come to me. You're free to do that. Yeah. Amen. And you know what? The, wow. the, the thing that, that you need to realize is that the Lord is not ashamed of you. Yes. That's right. <laughs> he is in no way ashamed of you, no matter what you did. Okay. Because whatever it was that you did that that you know you look at and go, oh my God, I'm just so ashamed of that. I'm, I'm you know, Lord. Jesus, he he paid for that. He bore that, and he says, I'm taking your shame. I'm taking your shame. And the Lord wants you to know today that if you'll simply trust Him and give that to Him, right. He's going to, as Jackie just did, you, you'll be released from that shame and that false guilt that the enemy is using to try to keep you from getting where you need to go. Okay? Because Papa's got wide open arms for you. You know? And all he wants you to do is agree with him. Just agree. You, know, you already know what to do was wrong. Just agree with him now that you're forgiven in Christ. <laughs> Amen. That's awesome. I hear wow. the word also sorrow. He's mm. not only taking your shame, he's taking all your sorrows. Mm. For the years that you've been so isolated in pain and sorrow and suffering, he's taking all that tonight. The Lord said, I am giving you that peace that you so long for for so long. Mm. Thank you, Daddy. Mm. And I just release a peace upon you right now, wherever you are, a peace that only the Lord can give you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Awesome. Well, it's been fun, as always. And I think the Lord's been doing some good things tonight in, in many hearts. And will, as we, you know, as this Amen. recording is watched by hopefully many others down the road. So uh, we'll, we'll call it a night and um, be back next Wednesday for our um, next installment of the Prodigal Son story that we're talking yeah. about. And I guess in two weeks, when you'll be back, we'll we'll continue with uh, Esther with Esther soaking. Esther soaking. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sounds good. Esther. All right. Well, you guys be blessed, and we'll catch you next time. Have a great. Day.